the evolution of hockey goalie equipment. The first hockey game was played in 1875. Originally goalies and players dressed and looked the same. They were winter pants with high up socks and a big sweater as games were outdoors. They also used a thin wooden stick that they would make themselves from maple and willow trees. During this time there was no hand protection because shots were low and goalies were not allowed to drop on the ice to stop shots. They did have shin guards that looked like cricket pads but much smaller and these were made mainly out of plastic and leather. If a goalie fell to their knees on the ice, either intentionally or not, they would be given a minor penalty and a $2 fee. This was the case until 1896, when there were rules that emerged including what goalies could do in the crease and where. They allowed goalies to drop to the ice to stop shots, therefore goalies began to become creative and look for better protection. Goalies initially started wearing cricket pads for leg protection. George Merritt of the Winnipeg Victorias was the first to put them on in a game, and he got a shutout 2 nothing, to win the Stanley Cup, hockey's greatest trophy. At this time, you could see more of the goalie himself than his equipment itself, as gear was very limited and no face mask was used yet. The cricket pads became very popular worldwide by the 1900s and were becoming modded to make them thicker and wider. In 1917, goalie stars used handmade leather mitts as gloves that were stuffed with felt and animal hair. In addition, the goalie sticks were cut differently than the players having a wider blade to help cover the lower part of the net. By the 1924 NHL hockey season, a new company called Kaneski helped develop the first pair of hockey pads that were modeled on cricket pads, but was limited to 12 inches wide. They were handcrafted in Canada and were made out of horsehide filled with kapok. These pads easily became waterlogged and broke down quickly. Around the early 1930s, the blocker mitt was introduced and was used to punch the puck out. They were like the stuffed leather mitts in 1917, but had a bigger blocking surface on top. A goalie named Clint Benedict, who played for the Montreal Maroons in 1930, was the first to use a mask as sticks were hitting him in the face. But his leather model was short-lived because it obstructed his view. During the mid-1940s, when goalies began to use baseball gloves on their catching hands, a trend that began when Emil the Cat Francis of the New York Rangers took the ice with a large first baseman's glove. During the 1950s, player stick companies started to shave their blades to create a curve in which they would now be able to lift the puck off the ice and their rising hard shots made goaltending more dangerous. On November 1, 1959, Canadian's goalie Jacques Plante was hit in the face with a puck during a playoff game and started bleeding on the ice. He needed a numerous amount of stitches and he refused to go back onto the ice unless he wore a mask that he already tried in a practice. He started using a self-designed fiberglass mask that eventually made facial protection common in the NHL and other hockey leagues across the globe. Plant then went on an 18-game winning streak. Jumping to the 1970s is when masks became more popular and every single goalie was wearing one. Fiberglass masks were now being fitted to a goalie's face and goalies began to express their personalities and their designs on their face mask, which spurred on a face mask artist industry. Some famous masks worn in this time included a skeleton look, and Eddie Cheevers from Boston began to add drawn on stitches on his mask for every time his mask was hit by a puck. This was to signify how many stitches he could have had to endure had he not had a mask. By the 1980s, leg pads were also being custom made, and factories found a way to add color to their pads, but not many changes were made to the leg pads since what was worn in the 50s. They did start to add plastic and harder foams in the core of the pad. The padding was still stuffed canvases for the blockers and trappers. In 1984, the catching gloves were being made bigger and moved away from the baseball gloves having the catching pocket to be webbed with lacing. During this period, masks were a hybrid of fiberglass and epoxy resin secured to the head by a plate on the back. To gain an edge, some keepers began wearing leg pads that exceeded a width of 12 inches wide, creating an era when goaltenders looked for any advantage by inflating their equipment size. 
In 1985, the goalie stick manufacturers like Bauer, Coho, Kaniski, Sherwood, and Vaughn started making their goalie sticks with curves so that the goalies would be able to shoot and lift the puck off the ice like the players do. And by 1987, they started customizing their sticks and curves to a goalie's preference and style. Goalie companies with new technology started to add color to their pads so that goalies were able to match their team. By 1988, an NHL goalie for the Blackhawks named Tony Esposito added a cage over the mask to provide additional eye protection. It wasn't until late 1990s when goalie companies started to make big changes to the mask and applying a large cage in the center, making it more safe for goalies and this created more visibility as well as a big portion of fiberglass used all around, along with some Kevlar and carbon fiber. The mid-90s marked the time when goalie masks evolved to what we essentially see being worn today. As a goalie who plays in the modern era, the mask represents a part of the goalie's equipment which allows the goalie to show their respective personalities on masks and in that way made it a fun piece of equipment as part of their profession. Creating artistic work on the goalie mask also making a larger industry of mask artists who worked with individual goalies to come up with designs and artwork on goalie masks. In the early 2000s, it marks the approximate time when goalie equipment became known by some as the cheating stage. It was when goalies started to wear oversized equipment purposely to cover more net. Leg pads were extended well above the knee to help close off their five hole and gloves were being extended by three to four inches. Years later, in 2005, the NHL decided that enough was enough, as goalies were letting in an average of two goals per game, which was making the game boring and not fun for fans to watch. Therefore, pads were now being made proportioned to a goalie's size. Leg pads could be no wider than 11 inches, blockers were reduced from 16 inches to 15 inches, and the circumference of catching gloves were shrunk from 48 inches to 45 inches to make pucks harder to hold on to and creating more rebounds for players. In 2006, the league hired a former NHL goalie, Kay Whitmore, to be the goalie equipment auditor whose job is to review and approve each goalie's equipment in the NHL to ensure proper sizing. As a result of these changes, all the equipment manufacturers have incorporated these changes to their basic standard size, the maximum width and length on various pieces of goalie equipment. The first full composite hockey stick was launched in 1998, but goalies didn't use them as often as players until the early 2000s, but they didn't gain popularity until around 2011. This propelled the entire stick to previously unseen heights of success. Small responsive shafts and a well-balanced blade made for an excellent set. Every NHL goaltender now uses composite sticks. After the 2012 NHL season, the league management felt that goalie pads were still too big. So starting in the 2013 season, the NHL reduced the height of leg pads. Overall, the goalie position in ice hockey has come a long way. Even the physical size of goalies are now taken into account when teams choose their goalie. It wasn't abnormal in the old days to hear a goalie was 5'3 and 130 pounds with not so great protective equipment. In the modern era, some goalies are as big as 6'5 and weigh 200 pounds and are protected by advanced armor made of form-fitting Kevlar, rubber, carbon fiber, foam, and titanium. Their leg pads cushion their landings now and lie flat with the ice when horizontal and there are many more changes to be made in the upcoming 2022 hockey season. Every year there are changes to each part of goalie equipment that make it better and lighter to use and stop pucks. And that is the evolution of hockey goalie equipment. Thanks for watching.